my reference VM is up to date, fully shut down, and I'm ready to capture my image. To start the capture, I'll switch to the Smart Deploy console, go to the Activities workspace, click Reimage Devices, and then click Capture Image. When the Capture Wizard starts, click Next and then click Browse to browse to and select your reference machine's virtual hard disk file. If you're unsure where this file is, you can find the path by looking at your virtual disk properties in the Settings panel for your reference VM. Click Open and then click Next. Most virtual disks will look just like this, and you can safely leave the default selections as is and click Next. The Capture Wizard then gives you an opportunity to specify a Windows product key, but it's not required. If you specify one now, it will be permanently applied to your image, and you won't be able to change it later, and you won't be prompted again. If you have your Volume License product key, you can set it here so you don't have to worry about it later. If you're just testing, or you don't have your key, you can leave the field blank to instead specify the key in your answer file. However, a product key is not required for deployment, neither here nor in the answer file. And since I'm just testing, I'll leave it blank and click Next. If you are using the built-in administrator account on your reference VM and want your image to deploy with a different password for this account, you can specify the new password here. This is not required, so I'll leave it blank and click Next. The next choice to make is to create a standard image or a differencing image. A differencing image can leverage data in an existing image file to save on space. Most of the time, especially when first getting started, you'll be selecting standard image. I find that it's easier to manage my images this way and it makes deployment a little simpler as well. Now I'll choose a name and location to save my image WIM file. I recommend the images folder in your Smart Deploy directory. In addition to the name of the WIM file, I have to give the image a name. This is because a single WIM file can contain multiple images. I recommend using specific names for your images and adding some extra details in the description pane, such as the date that it was captured or the contents of the image, before clicking Next. I'll click Next again and then Finish to get the capture started. I'm going to speed this portion of the video up while I explain what's happening. Your virtual hard disk will be mounted in Windows and then Smart Deploy will copy your files out of the disk and into your WIM file along with the other information we specified in the capture wizard. Let's see what that looks like when it's finished. When I switch to the images workspace of the Smart Deploy console, I can see a lot of helpful information about my image at a glance. We can also see that it's considerably smaller than the original virtual disk file. This is because Smart Deploy knows which files are duplicates and thus can be left out and does a great job of saving space. With my image captured, I'm ready to proceed to the next step.